Oh, we're on the air. <laughs> hey. Oh, Carl, it's how, how you doing? <laughs> By gum. Well, How's I'm, that for spontaneity? Uh huh. Huh? And you'd never think that his wife looked that bad. <laughs> 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 well, hi, welcome to Cooking Cheap. Welcome to our living room, yes, dining, dining, dining room, room, right? Whatever this is, this pigsty that right. we call a dining room. Now, uh, I want everybody today mm -hmm. to pay careful attention. Go get your pencil and paper right now. Go get your children. Call up uh, any of your neighbors that can't cook, because we're going to try to help the afflicted today. <laughs> we are literally going to explain boiling water. That's right. And some some guy wrote in last week and said his his wife didn't know how to boil water. <laughs> so we're going to straighten that out. And not only that, but then after we learn how to boil water, we're going to show you several things to do with it. Besides uh, birth, besides and birth and babies. That's right. <laughs> We have gotten, <laughs> as usual, we have gotten stuff from around the world. Oh, what have we got? This cheesy looking individual, I don't know whether you can get a close on that or not. Now don't show the logo, <laughs> I'll get in big trouble, let me hold my finger. <laughs> Has sent us, uh, uh, <laughs> this man is wanted in several states. <laughs> And uh, he is being replaced by this uh, piece of rubber. Now this piece of rubber is for, for opening up, getting a better grip on... Uh, yourself. On yourself. Get a grip <laughs> on yourself, Johnson, and just put that on someone's face. Now that's just one of them devices that you use to open up, you know, are bottles you, and oh, jars. Are you, you sure? Yeah, that's that what That looks that's like for. one of those things that you get from Dr. Scholl to put on your feet. Oh dear. Goodness, no, I hope not. But anyway, thanks an awful lot. We appreciate that. It's got the company logo uh -huh. right on. I thought we were going to get that on television, uh -huh. but this is public TV, and we don't believe in stuff like that. Anyway, now let's see what else we got. We appreciate that because Johnson does have problems opening those cans once in a while. The very lovely and semi-voluptuous Dorothy Ridgway, yes. who's one of our favorite people Ms. in the Dorothy world, Dorothy Marie, has sent us this rather attractive uh, Volkswagen uh, stapler. <laughs> Uh, which uh, doesn't work so hot, but it's real cute. <laughs> there oh, it is, a boy. Volkswagen you stapler. know, that, that's so nice to have. Oh, I, it is. Larry plays with it on his desk. He runs it up and down, and and his secretary and the cat they have running through it fight over who's going to get to play with it. Let me staple your nose shut. Okay, now let's see what else we got here. We Oh, we just have some. People many. just send us so many nice <laughs> things. <laughs> yeah, remember, keep those things. You may need them <laughs> yourself sometime. Now this is real cute. We are going to put this on our set permanently. This is a little uh, baking bear salt and pepper set. Aww. Aren't they real cute? Say they're going together. Uh huh. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Mama and Daddy Bear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, kiss, kiss, kiss. so well, there maybe you go. during the show while you're fooling around over there because you've got such a complicated recipe. Now you could today. use these for little mittens <laughs> if you want to. The things that uh -huh. came in, the three you little those <laughs> kittens that lost their mittens, mittens and they began to cry. Now what anyway, is it that no, I'm going to do? No, while you're doing that, perhaps I will have time to fill them up. Oh, that would be nice. Yes, it would. The one with. And I am such a nice. Person. Do you know which one's which? A lot of people yeah. have problems with this. You know when it doesn't say on the front or the back or the bottom which one's which. What you do is you look at the whole holes on top. Oh, I am so glad you told us that. <laughs> that is such a valuable piece of information. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never told them how Take they... your rubber thing and get out of here. <laughs> Let me get a grip on the table here. <laughs> yeah, it works perfectly. And we'll go over here to the, the kitchen. Now, we're going to talk about boiling water first, right? Right. Is, is now, that correct? Right over here, I have in this pot some water that's going to boil in a few minutes. Well, now we should We're going watch. to bring it to the point of ebullition. Ebullition. That's the technical name for boiling. Oh, in the I never. Ebullition. Uh huh. Ebulate. And ebulate. it comes, well, you know that word ebullient, you know, bubbly and everything. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. Sure. Ebullition. That's where it comes from. So you can tell about the water as it goes through the stages of boiling that you, when it starts making little bubbles, and you can just now begin to see them down in here as the little bubbles pop up off the bottom of your pot. That's the beginning of the boiling. Now, one thing that's really important that a lot of people don't get straight is that when you boil water, start with a pot full of cold water. Don't start with hot water out of the tap. Start with cold water. And don't start with warm water. That's right. Because you won't be ahead of the game. Because believe it or not, cold water will boil faster. The Little molecules will collide into one another much faster when they uh, receive the heat from the source, the eye on the range, and cold water will boil faster than hot water will. The hot water molecules 
are big and heavy and cloppy like this, and the cold waters are rah, real frenetic. How and are so they? They'll boil faster. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it How about wonderful? an instant replay on that? I like that. I've never seen him do that before. So that's right. how to boil water. And you can do all kinds of things with boiling water. The principle of boiling water is the same thing as very hot heat. Fascinating And that show. seals the juices and other goodies in meat, for instance. Mm -hmm. It breaks down the toughness in vegetables mm -hmm. and it kills the germs. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to see a lot of activity yeah. in there right and, now and from where we stand, can, but I yeah. doubt if you can see it out there. Well, there are little bubbles coming along the bottom and that's the big first stage of it. Now once you get a big pot of boiling water, you can do all kinds of things with it. I think you can see, just begin to see them there on the telly. Just start to get ready uh -huh. to burst they're, forward they're to just emulate. Just beginning to come out. And the next thing that happens is when those bubbles hit the surface of the water, they will begin to, and you can just begin to see it, they'll begin to steam. Now Bly's got a big pot of steaming water over there. Dr. Bly, what have you got in it? I have a homemade chicken stock and it just started reboiling. I made it up yesterday. As a matter of fact, this I made some fresh chicken stock yesterday afternoon, and you know what? It, it got to smell it so good yesterday afternoon, I had to try out this recipe. And what I'm going to do in this stock after a while, now I've, got, I've reduced it down because we don't need to keep it boiling. What you need to do is boil it until that scum comes up on top. Scummy. That, do you know where the scum comes where from? Where does the scum come? I studied up on this too. The from. scum is the result of the chemical reaction between the boiling water and the surface of the meat. And you do okay. have to get it off. You can't leave it on there because it'll be nasty. You'll kill several of the people. That no, it, it just doesn't taste no, good. It really it'll doesn't be bitter. taste very good at all. Now so, I got most of it. This has been reboiled, so it's still just a little bit left in there. And if you'll notice, our, our water now is really it beginning is to boil. Island. Yes, it is. Now, what I did with the chicken stock, if you, if you have never made up stock from scratch, all you do is you, I got myself a, a whole fryer cut up, or you can get a stewing chicken, which you told me is an older, tougher yeah, chicken, right. which is good it's for boiling. It's been around for, a long time. Been around a long time, like Johnson has. It's right yeah, tough I'm the on stewing outside. chicken of Channel 15. <laughs> put a couple don't of, forget it. Put a couple of quarts <laughs> of water in there, and a little salt and pepper to taste, and just uh, slowly bring it to a boil, get the scum off of it, then reduce the heat down so that it just stays nice and hot, and, and, and cover it if you want to, and I've boiled that all afternoon. Now you will see some some strange things rolled around in there. That's some of the. Wait a minute. Of, Can what? you see the little puffs of steam coming out of the top of mine? Oh, it is. It's sending out signals. Let me see if I can read it. It says. It says, "Don't threaten me. <laughs> I'll get even with you." I don't know what that means. <laughs> Somebody must have been threatening somebody else around here recently. Oh, look at it. It's boiling real well yep, it's now. it's coming along. It's real pretty, real pretty. So anyway, now we've got our stock. I had it uh, cooking all day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an old southern recipe, which probably a lot of people in our viewing area could probably do better than I can. And we're go what we're going to do is make some dumplings. You hear that? Oh, well, since that water is boiling and we've got the uh, steam coming out, let me just throw this... Uh, I've got a cup of yellow cornmeal and I'm putting it in the top of a double boiler and I'm going to add some hot water to it and some cold water while Larry is doing that. Doctor? Oh, okay. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to make some dumplings to go in here and we've got to get started on it immediately because once we drop them in here they're going to have to cook covered for 15 minutes. And I have to admit to you, ladies and gentlemen, I tried this recipe yesterday evening and these things got so big <laughs> <laughs> that I was literally sitting in my living room and heard something out in the kitchen and ran out and they were coming out of the pot. They had gotten as big <laughs> as baseballs. They just took over the kitchen. So today I'm going to be a little more careful. What we're going to start out with is two cups of flour. True story. I wish you'd shut that thing up. Well, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew well, what I was going on. I think we all know what's going on now. There's several dogs waiting outside the studio. Heard that whistling. Two cups of flour. I used just, it doesn't say which kind of flour, but I used all purpose yesterday. Today I'm going to be really dangerous. I'm going to use self rising because I just want to see, I'll just amuse myself as to what's going to happen because it was such a mess yesterday. Two cups of that, three teaspoons of baking powder. Just, you don't have to be too terribly careful with this stuff. Just use your common sense, have a little fun with it. Now I've taken two eggs and cracked those and put them in a bowl. 
Where are we? Two eggs, put them in a bowl, get some of this junk out of the way. And uh, you don't know any of these people, do you, John? Who? What? Oh, I was just. No, saying. I. These I, aren't any of your I thought, folks. No, no, no. Down. I thought I right. saw one of them the other day, but I, I guess I was wrong. I thought I saw the one on the left, but I wasn't sure. Anyway, mm -hmm. so now we take two eggs, and into the two eggs, we're going to put two thirds cup of milk. And I'll be a little bit careful about this and measuring it out because you don't want to. You don't want to drown the miller. Have you ever heard that term, drown, drown the miller? miller. Uh -huh. No. Up where I come from, that's an old common term. It means that oh. uh, Tootsie used to say that, oh, don't drown the miller. Mm -hmm. That means you don't want to put too much uh, yeah. water in your flour. Mm -hmm. Two thirds. Except that's I milk. believe that's two thirds, yeah. Well, whatever, liquids, it doesn't uh -huh. matter. Now what we're gonna do is mix that all together. Get those eggs and mix them up just a little bit. Oh, don't tell me that. I need that long. Well, that's all right, we'll have them here in a minute. Oh, by the way, oh, and I need some salt. I didn't put any salt in this. Need a little bit of salt in there, all right? About a teaspoon mm -hmm. or a little more, and mix it all up real good. You're supposed to sift the stuff together, and I didn't have a sifter. So yesterday, I didn't have one either, so I just mixed it up real good with a spoon, real careful not to get it all over everything. <laughs> and uh, that'll do the job. Now what you do is you take the egg and the milk, and just put it down in there, like so. And I like to use a wooden spoon on this because it just feels good. And if it feels good, do it. And now you just mix that around until you've got it all mixed up real good and it's real gloppy. I'm rolling a lot. I need about 15 minutes to boil these, but they'll get done on a little bit less than that, so we won't be eating them raw. Do you see what I mean? You don't want to work this stuff too long. It's not necessary to work it too long. And you know what? what? That's just a little bit. Did you drown the miller? It's a little <laughs> bit thinner <laughs> than it had to be. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour to it. You all right? No, that was the miller choking. Oh, is that what that yeah, was? Yeah, but, but we brought him back. All right, Maureen just so you can work how it. To do it and we resuscitated See, it. See, just so you can work it like that. All right, now that's enough. Don't overdo it. Now, instead of getting your fingers in there and all that, what I would do at this point is turn that up so that that'll boil a little bit, if you will. All right, be glad to. What I would do now is, is just drop it in a little spoonful at a time and just drop it into the water, mm -hmm. like so. And that just float around in there and just keep dropping them in. And they do not sink. You mean that's all you got to do? They do not go to the bottom. They do not sink. They stay right on top if you've done what you're supposed to. And the chicken, by the way, the whole chicken parts and everything's still in there. So we pull these out. We'll reach down in there and grab some of that good chicken out to serve with it too. And you ought to have this at the boiling point right now. Yeah, it's starting to boil again. And what you'll do is you'll cover those for 15 minutes. Now that's all I'm going to do because I don't want to make another mess. Now, if you had a bigger, we need a little bit bigger pot than this, but if you had a bigger pot with more area in this direction, you could do this whole batch. Cover that up for 15 minutes, and that's it. Oh, good grief. Simple that's as it. can be. Well, with my uh, cornmeal, now I'm in the top of the double boiler, I put a cup of yellow cornmeal in a cup of cold water, stirred it around, and then I added three and a half cups of boiling water and a teaspoon of salt. And now look, it's it's boiling, and look at this bly. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, Mount Vesuvius. I know, it's just wild. Just went it off. Just throws little things in. Now, when it gets to that point. I believe it's spitting at us. You, you put it in a double boiler and you cover it up. And you know, a lot of people and, don't know how to use a double right. boiler. And a double boiler, well, for those of you that don't, are ignorant. It's just a pot that's got water in the bottom of it. It's got just water a little bit of water of to come just, up to uh, the bottom of the top. This thing and that boom goes in there. As you can see it's very convenient. And you cook that over medium or low heat, just let the water in the bottom simmer for an hour. And when you open it up at the end of an hour, this cornmeal mixture that I have in the pot right here will be very, very pretty and it will be all fluffy and nice. Now don't stick your hand in there, John. And you can serve that <laughs> just like you would, for instance, grits mm. if you live in the South. You know about grits or you could 
add any kind of flavor to it, uh, a half a stick of butter and some Parmesan cheese would be delicious. Right. Now, or you can do what I'm doing right over here, and, and that, what is is that I molded the grits. I made up a batch yesterday, and it's they've been molded in a loaf pan, so this is what it looks like. It's real pretty, and I'm just going to cut some slices of it, and look at that. It's just as pretty as it can be, and I'm going to fry these slices in a little bit of margarine that I have over here. And you can serve that as a side dish to any kind of uh, meat or fish or anything like that or in the morning for breakfast. So here's my margarine is bubbling away and I'm gonna put my slices of cornmeal mush down in that. And incidentally, you'll be interested to know that this goes by another name. It does? In other countries. It is also called polenta. Polenta. I think I used to go with a girl like named Polenta. And you fry this on both sides until it, thank you, until it is browned on both sides. How long Very, is that? very easy. Oh, I don't know. You just have to peek every once in a while. My granddaddy used to serve mush every morning for breakfast. When I was a kid. I didn't like it. I probably won't like it today. Oh. <laughs> well, now, this is real good this way. Maureen, what did you, what, our camera person, Maureen, has it with what? Uh, sour cream and what? And vodka. And cottage cheese. Sour she cream and it vodka. With sour cream and cottage cheese. Huh? Mama Ligola. Mama Ligola. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at your look dumplings. Look at these. I want you to see these dumplings. Look at them. Now, you don't have to turn them over because you're cooking them uh, with the, the Steam, lid on it. Yeah. You're just steaming them, but look at that, isn't that pretty? And those are, can you imagine how big they were yesterday when I put a great big tablespoon full? This is just a teaspoon each is what it is, and they fluff up real nice. They're real pretty. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes on that. I'm gonna cut That's them down amazing. this little. They don't need to go quite that hard. We don't wanna work them yeah. to death. And so boiling stuff is one of the first and primary forms of cooking. It's real easy to do. There's, there are terms like parboiling. If you've heard, heard of parboiling, same thing, it's called blanching. That's when you put a, a vegetable, usually, down in hot water for just a minute or so to partially cook it a little bit, and it also kills the germs. I, if you've been doing uh, any canning at your house or freezing, especially freezing, you know that the recipe will call for you to parboil the vegetables first, and that's just to ensure that you don't have any botulism in your frozen food. Now, you don't need anything opened up, do you? No. Oh, okay. No, you're not going to use that thing on me today. You know, a lot of people, something now that we're giving tips today, I should tell you, and I read an article not too long ago from the lady that, that rewrote the, oh, isn't that pretty? It's getting nice and brown on the outside. Lady that rewrote the, uh, uh, what's that old cookbook that the I joy used of to, cooking. No, no, the old one. It's been oh, around Fanny Farmer. Fanny Farmer cookbook. Just kind of left me all together there. <laughs> the woman that rewrote that book said that one of the main reasons that people fail in the kitchen is because they don't use fresh materials. And right. this is one that is especially critical in the kitchen. Throw you it do out. have to replace that stuff every, so every six months. That's right. Uh, throw out the old baking powder and buy some new. You don't and have, you don't have to buy powder. a huge can. You can buy a little bitty can so you're not throwing out right. tons of it. You know, speaking of that, one of the best things I think that's happened recently is, is packaging uh, tomato paste in tubes. Right. So that you only have to squirt out what you need, put the cap on it, throw it in the refrigerator. Yeah, one you don't of, have to buy a can. One, I think it's uh, next week's show. I've been looking at uh, the recipes we're going to do, and I'm doing one that calls just for a tablespoon of tomato sauce. Really? And it'll be a lot easier to be able to squeeze it out of the uh, of the tube than it would be to open up a can, take out a tablespoon, and, and try to put that can back in your refrigerator. This is getting real nice and pretty and golden here. It really is. Gorgeous. Lair, <laughs> may, maybe if I ever get it turned This up. is your backhand turning so stuff. Right. There you go. Maybe we ought to look and see yes. uh, how these, uh, what these recipes are exactly. Chicken and dumplings, you can either stock, you can start out with uh, that prefabricated uh, chicken stock that you right. buy in the cans, or you can make your own stock from a real old dead chicken. 
two and a half quarts of chicken stock, one stewing, this is for the dumplings, two cups of flour, flour three cups of, uh, three teaspoons of baking powder, teaspoon of salt, uh, two eggs, and two thirds cup of milk. And just mix that all up and throw it in that stock as it's bubbling along and cover it up for 15 minutes. And now for the cornmeal mush, you need a cup and a half of uh, yellow cornmeal, four and a half cups of water, tablespoon of salt, um, half a stick of margarine, and a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, that's optional. And you put them, mix them up in the uh, double boiler, steam it for an hour in your double boiler, and it'll turn into this beautiful mush. And you can either eat it then, or you can let it stay in your refrigerator cold. Ooh, tell you, these dumplings are coming right along. They're just so light and fluffy. Just mortally fluffy. Oh, I'm real pleased. Boy, I'm going to cut oh that boy, down. Oh in fact, boy. I'm going to go on ahead and cut it off. I think they will finish cooking just fine. Fact of the matter is, they're probably already ready. Mm -hmm. Well, ready. Uh, let's see uh, if Miss Witch has got a letter for us this week. Well, I don't know. I oh, oh, she just does. did a flyover. Hold it, hold it, hold it. She's Amazing. wearing them bright red ones. <laughs> <laughs> Dear guys, my <laughs> husband made chicken bread the other night. He started out to make chicken gravy after he fried a chicken, and he messed it up so bad that it turned to wallpaper paste, which then cooked uh, to bread. Uh -huh. Can you help him? Mm. Sounds like he had a gravy go bad or something. Uh-huh, and it's signed Sally, I can't read this last name, Sally McGillicuddy of Woodstock, Virginia. <laughs> well, Sally, we'll try to help your husband out of his ignorance next week and uh, do some gravies for you. Well, that sounds like a good and deal. And some sauce. That'll be another one for, for people that can't cook. Real easy. Well, Bly? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and get these things out of here intact, along with some of that marvelous juice that goes with them. They've kind of fallen apart, Johnson. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I don't know. You might have put in too much of the uh, baking powder, you and they just so? blew apart. Yeah. I believe they did. I believe they just totally exploded. Oh, they did. They're just oh. as light as a feather. Unfortunately, they're so light. <laughs> that light as a chicken feather. Uh -huh. Now you see we got all these assorted chicken parts down in here too. All yeah, it would probably be meat. a good idea not to use the uh, yeah. self-rising flour. Yeah, that was a lousy idea. Well, I kind of figured it would be because with the uh, just the standard, you may want to put some of that chicken in there too and make sure you don't kill anyone with a bone while you're at it. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I tried it yesterday with just the regular flour and it was, it, it went crazy even with just that, so I knew today we were going to have extraordinary results with it. Are we going to make some attempt to... Oh, I think we ought to try to have some. Oh, I got so much junk here, let me... Oh dear. <laughs> have yourself a... Well, you see it still has a little form of a dumpling. Mm -hmm. Well, while he's doing that, I'm going to try some of this fried mush. Mm -mm. Reminds me of my granddad. Oh mush. boy, the dumpling was real good. But it is good, especially mm -hmm. that little mm -hmm. bit of Parmesan mm -hmm. cheese on that. And I'll have to try it. This dumpling is just a little too light, folks. You can get them too light. This one's just a little bit too light. It's almost like eating, what would you say, grits. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. But it is good though. It really is good. But much too real hot. hot. Yeah, much too oh. hot. And and the chicken is is right good too. The it's chicken is terrific. Wonderful. Just no so tender and nice. Mm. Mm -mm. It started boiling that up yesterday afternoon. Mm. I just smelled so good there was just no way I could prevent from doing the recipe, just to try it. Well, it's real interesting to see what you can do with a pot of hot water and something to throw in. But I tell you what, I'd rather have one of these that's just a little bit mushy 
than I would some of those leaden ones I've been served oh, on I'm... occasion. Some of those that stay in the bottom of your tummy all evening mm -hmm. long and through the night when you tried to sleep and you're rolling around, that big thing's down in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, whew. I'd rather have it this way any day of the week. Mm. Oh, it's so hot. Well, mm. we got it. It's real good. <laughs> well, we got to get out of here in uh, about 30 seconds. <laughs> I have got maybe more burns of the mouth. <laughs> I've got them all the way down. To, I've got them down to my kneecaps. <laughs> well, anyway, it's come on back good. next week and, no. and, and we'll do uh, gravies for you and maybe a sauce or two. Nice. If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.